Good day, folks. Uh, my name is Omer C. Ahern, Jr. And the name of this program, which I've been doing for quite a while with the uh, help of the uh, PBTV folks here in Plymouth, uh, the name of this program is Just Omer. And I, again, I've been doing this for several years. And this is my periodic report as a Grafton County Commissioner to the people of Grafton County and beyond. Uh, I've served several terms as a Grafton County Commissioner, and I've also served a couple of terms as a Sullivan County Commissioner, both counties, of course, here in New Hampshire. And with, especially with the problems of uh, COVID over the last few years and lockdowns and things like that, these uh, programs that I'm doing with the help of the PBTV it purpose is to keep folks up to date on what's going on with their county government here in Grafton County. Now, there are 10 counties in New Hampshire. Uh, the counties were first set up back in the uh, mid 18 or the late 1870s. And uh, counties were set up by state statute to have a nursing home, a Department of Corrections, House of Correction, jail, and at the very beginning, farm operations. Right now in Grafton County, we do have a 135 bed nursing home facility, one of the best in the nation, according to uh, the reports that we, the commissioners get uh, periodically through our nursing home administrator, Craig Labor. We also have a Department of Corrections, which has a uh, House of Correction and a jail for pretrial uh, detainees. And we're going to talk a little bit about that with the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, report from the House of Correction and jail, what people are in for. And uh, we, uh, we also have a farm. And Grafton County is the last county in New Hampshire. Again, there's 10 counties in New Hampshire. We are the last county in New Hampshire to still have an active working dairy farm. We're milking right now about uh, 55 cows, Holsteins and Jerseys and Guernseys, mostly Holsteins. And uh, we also uh, uh, have quite a number of uh, calves and, and uh, uh, other uh, livestock. We also have a pig operation and we have chickens so that we can produce eggs. Uh, the milk uh, that we produce is not right now used on the uh, Grafton County campus that, that milk is sold to Agrimark and the money that comes from selling our milk to Agrimark is used uh, to help defray some of the expenses of the, uh, of the farm. So uh, on, uh, we, we got a report on July 9th from our farm manager, interim farm manager, Ben White, and uh, it's the July 24 farm report and the first thing he mentioned was there are currently 55 cows milking, averaging 77 pounds per cow. We provide 116,980 pounds of milk uh, for the month of June. Uh, components worth 4.20% butterfat and 3.3% protein. The uh, milk pay price in June was $24.04 uh, uh, per 100 weight for, Grafton, for the Grafton County farm. The second item on the farm report from, uh, from Ben, the chickens are still producing well. Uh, the pigs have all uh, farrowed out. We, uh, we, we have a few more piglets due later on in the summer with a, a buyer in place for all of these other uh, piglets. Uh, number three, the gardens look very well. Uh, the first round of sweet corn is starting to tassel out. Hopefully, we will have vegetables being uh, harvested by the end of July. And when I was over at the farm yesterday, uh, Tuesday, the um, uh, third, uh, Tuesday, the 16th of July, 
I talked with one of the, uh, the farm workers, and he said that we should be expecting sweet corn next week, and that sweet corn will be some of that sweet corn that's not used in the uh, Department of Corrections, is not used in the nursing home, will be sold at the uh, county farm stand, which is up there in North Haverhill. We also have uh, cucumbers and summer squash uh, that we'll be selling uh, through the summer as well. And then we're also growing two varieties of potatoes, white potatoes uh, and uh, uh, red potatoes. We also are growing uh, buttercup winter squash, butternut winter squash, blue hubbard winter squash, and we grow pumpkins. And a lot of the pumpkins, uh, when Halloween starts to roll around, we share with some of the uh, students, grade school students, uh, in the North Haverhill schools. So um, we have, uh, Ben continues to report that uh, we uh, are awaiting the second crop of hay to be harvested. And even though the rain has slowed things down a little bit, but uh, the hay harvest is, is coming along pretty well. So uh, I'm pretty pleased to make this report about the farm operation. One of the things that's very important to me, and I've been asking about this, but kind of in the minority on this, the farm operations can be much more successful uh, if, if the county is willing to do a few things. And one of those things requires a change in the state law. We need to have more uh, labor out of the Department of Corrections. Again, in, in, you know, in, in, in the old days, the inmates worked out on the farm. And uh, if, the thing is, if, if the inmates didn't work on the farm, the inmates uh, wouldn't have an awful lot to eat. So I, I'd like to see the farm, uh, the farm produce be fed into the uh, county Department of Corrections. But that's another story for another day, and uh, I'll, ke I'll keep you posted on that. Because this is, again, this situation with the farm being able to do more to save money for the taxpayers of Grafton County is something that I outlined in a uh, proposal that I made about three and a half years ago called Farm Doc. And I mentioned it on these programs, F-A-R-M-D-O-C, Farm Doc. So on the uh, 9th of uh, July, the commissioners had a meeting and uh, we started out with uh, Jim Oaks, the maintenance supervisor, and uh, he had a non-public session, so I can't talk about that. Um, we, uh, and, and we did have the farm report, which I just read to you. Um, we did have uh, some uh, appropriation transfers that were done at that meeting, and those appropriation transfers, uh, because this is a time of year when we're in our transitional stage for the budget. Our fiscal year in Grafton County runs from July 1st to the following July 30th. And so we're kind of in a transition period in, in the fact that uh, not all the money that's been appropriated to be spent in the fiscal year 24 was spent. And so there's a request by some of the department heads and elected officials to have some of the money or all of the money that wasn't spent in fiscal year 24, which ended on June 30th, 24, uh, be held over, <coughs> excuse me, held over to be spent during fiscal year 2025, which started on July 1st. So uh, there was an appropriate, there were appropriation transfers totaling $345,000. And um, some of that money uh, uh, came from the federal government, and uh, there was another amount of money uh, coming as a result of some other things that the county does with regard to land uh, in Grafton County that is not uh, inhabited by, by people and working with the uh, local governments on that. Um, so that was, there was another big issue, yeah, there was another big issue that was uh, discussed in non-public session. And uh, it was a request from, from some constituents 
to look into a matter that uh, they felt very concerned about. So because those constituents were from my District 3, uh, I'm not going to tell you what the town is, but uh, I was asked to follow up on that, and uh, I'm, I, I did follow up on it, and there'll be uh, some uh, involvement uh, with, the, with the state government in, in, their, in their request. Uh, and yesterday, uh, July 16th, the county commissioners met again, Ju Tuesday, July 16th, and uh, we had a, uh, the first item on the agenda was uh, Jeffrey Stiegler, the high sheriff of Grafton County. He gave his uh, monthly report, and then he also uh, had requested from the county commissioners uh, permission to spend money that had been appropriated for his department to purchase a new sheriff's cruiser and outfit it with all the necessary technical equipment uh, that wasn't purchased uh, in the fiscal year 24 because, quite uh, frankly, the uh, automobile uh, manufacturers are not able to keep up with uh, the number of uh, motor vehicles, especially uh, specialized vehicles such as sheriff and law enforcement vehicles. So we were not able to make that purchase in fiscal year 24. So uh, the sheriff asked if we could uh, make that purchase here in fiscal year 25. And we're looking at a total cost of somewhere uh, just under $70,000 to make that purchase for the Grafton County Sheriff's Department. Uh, he tries, the sheriffs try to uh, always keep the vehicles, the sheriff's vehicles in tip-top condition, oil changes, greasing, uh, things like that. Uh, but, you know, they put a lot of miles on their cruisers uh, doing uh, 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 criminal warrant, uh, arresting people under criminal warrants, uh, civil warrants, people that are involved in lawsuits and having to serve documents based upon what the courts want to have happen. Um, so that was the big thing that we have from uh, Sheriff Stiegler. Uh, and he, again, he makes all of, all of the department heads and all of the elected officials appear in front of the county commissioners uh, once a month to give monthly reports. Uh, make requests of things that they need, and, and sometimes we may meet with them two or three times a month based upon, you know, what's going on out there. Um, I'm just looking at the, cal at the uh, timer here, make sure I'm not going to be overdoing my time. Uh, the uh, next item uh, was a report, the monthly report from Jim Oaks, the maintenance superintendent. And uh, Jim Oaks always gives us quite a uh, uh, lengthy and detailed report. Uh, we're still working with American Rescue Plan, also known as ARPA funds, and uh, we're using some of that money uh, to make repairs and make some purchases in the administration building. Uh, and that's, and this particular item is for uh, a parking. Uh, um, in, uh, making the parking lots there at the county facility more safe. He reported that that project is complete. Uh, the front steps of the administration building, uh, there's some issues there, and, he, and we've got to make sure that we're meeting uh, the requirements of the America's, uh, American Disability Act. So we made a report on that, that we're going to try to make sure those stairs, because, you know, the wintertime and putting salt on the steps that kind of raises a little bit of havoc with, with those steps, and those steps are used a lot every day by uh, members, you know, uh, employees of the county and people that are coming in to use the registry of deeds. So we've got to make sure everything is in uh, very good condition. Uh, he reported on uh, the situation with the Department of Corrections showers in that big building up there. Uh, talk, he talked a little bit about uh, uh, putting in a new maintenance department equipment storage uh, shed because they, they have some new equipment that needs to be, you know, kept under cover. Uh, big project coming up uh, under the maintenance department, but this is going to be under the nursing home uh, needs. Is a, there's a nursing home landscape project. We got some, uh, we got some money from the federal government 
to make some improvements around the nursing home to kind of make the nursing home grounds a little more uh, delightful for our residents in the, in the nursing home. Um, we have some issues with emissions uh, in our county complex uh, that evident, evidently uh, affect the air resources there. And so we're dealing with the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, the Air Resources Division, and we're trying to, we gotta make sure that we're in full compliance uh, with the evaluations that the state uh, agencies uh, come up and do at Grafton County quite a bit. Uh, at the courthouse, uh, they do preventive maintenance and there's also some HVAC issues. Uh, the air conditioning uh, condensation uh, units aren't quite doing what they need to do. Um, again, at the nursing home, there's uh, preventive maintenance going on there. The fire alarm system was acting up the other day and uh, it took several attempts to figure out what was going on, causing the fire alarms to go off at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, lighting throughout the uh, administration building there, uh, uh, making some uh, additions and changes to the uh, kitchen. Um, propane steamer uh, was, uh, was brought in. And again, HVAC issues there. Evidently, there was mist setting off uh, an alarm on the HVAC system in the, uh, in the nursing home. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, at the Department of Corrections, also some HVAC issues there. The heat pump uh, was not uh, working quite as it should, and so it involves getting good uh, technical people from the uh, maintenance department. But it's hard to find good qualified people. We're very fortunate that Mr. Oaks is able to find good people, but uh, sometimes the uh, private sector out there uh, woos some of our employees away by offering them uh, a lot more money. Even though Grafton County offers some of the best um, retirement programs uh, and, and, and uh, other uh, side benefits, uh, people are looking more these days for what that, uh, weekly or, or bi-weekly paycheck is giving them and not necessarily what's going to be coming to them in the future if they uh, if they work you know uh, you know 20 or or 30 years at, at the county um, so th this is quite a lengthy report uh, from uh, Mr. Oaks and when the uh, commissioner meetings minutes are approved uh, the uh, copy of that report is is online Another thing that we're working with Mr. Oaks on uh, is the Grafton County Courthouse situation. Uh, our, the Grafton County Courthouse up there in North Haverhill, uh, that was built back in the uh, 1970s. Uh, it's, uh, and it's, it's, it's evidently according to some architects and some engineers who have done a study on the existing uh, courthouse up there uh, it, there are some aspects of the courthouse that, frankly, are, are not safe. So we are looking into uh, building uh, a new county courthouse that will continue to uh, host or provide uh, uh, space for the Grafton County uh, Registry of Deeds, uh, the Grafton County a Attorney, uh, the, the Grafton County Sheriff's Department, as well as a couple of other uh, state agencies, uh, the parole, the parole board for our, our neck of the woods up there. So we uh, we did meet with uh, a couple of uh, uh, administrative people from the state of New Hampshire, from the Judiciary Department, about uh, putting in a, a new courthouse. What would be required? A lot of new things that uh, are necessary in this day and age. A lot of unfortunate things are going on out there and uh, there is a need to have uh, some uh, additional improved uh, equipment that will allow a more safe environment for our judges. Uh, the attorneys going into court, uh, superior court, and uh, the uh, other people that are gonna be working out of that new at New Courthouse. 
One of the things that I wanted to definitely share with you uh, is the Superior, uh, the, the uh, Department of Corrections Superior Court Report. We get this report every month from the uh, Department of Corrections. And what it is, it's, it's a list of all of the inmates, residents of the Department of Corrections, who are currently being held at the Grafton County House of Correction and Jail. And I just want to share with you, uh, no names, but uh, the courts and what some of these people are being held for. Yes, it's pretrial in some cases, but what they're being charged with. Uh, there are, you know, there are, there, there are people that have several charges pending against them. But uh, these are things that are all being handled uh, through our county attorney program. Uh, the county attorney right now is attorney Marcy Hornick. And uh, she has a staff of about uh, 12 uh, assistant county attorneys. And, uh, but let me just give you a list. Uh, first one on the list, uh, that person is in there for violation of probation. Uh, <clears throat> the next person is in there for uh, falsifying physical evidence. And these two are out of the Grafton County Superior Court. Uh, the, third, uh, the, the second person is also in there for possession uh, of a drug with intent to sell. Uh, another person is in there for robbery. Uh, another one is in there for violation of protective orders. Uh, another one is in there for domestic violence. Uh, another one aggravated felonious sexual assault. Uh, <clears throat> criminal threatening. More, another person with uh, more uh, aggravated felonious sexual assault. These are all coming out of the Grafton County Superior Court. Uh, felonious sexual assault, criminal threatening. Um, Violation of probation, criminal trespassing, uh, fraudulent uh, use of credit cards, controlled drug act violations, uh, pres pr possession of prescription drugs illegally, uh, uh, violating the controlled drug act, uh, criminal trespassing, criminal contempt. Uh, these last few were out of the Kowas County Superior Court and the Lebanon Circuit Court. Now, why would Grafton County be holding uh, Coas County uh, inmates? Uh, there's two things that would happen. Uh, if, if, the, if a Coas County inmate uh, is causing trouble up there or uh, is being assaulted by other inmates up there, we, uh, we, we are willing to bring and offer a safe environment for that person down in Grafton County. Uh, Grafton County has 150 bed uh, facility uh, in, its, in its jail and house of correction and right now I think we're only filling about a hundred of those of those beds. So these are some of the things that we're handling uh, in our Department of Corrections. Um, again a lot of felonious sexual assaults. A lot. Uh, it's, it's very distressing to see that uh, in, our, in our present society here especially in Grafton County. Uh, we've got a person being held for second degree murder, again, out of the Grafton County Superior Court. Uh, that same person is also being charged with first degree murder. Um, we have another one in there for counterfeit uh, out of the Plymouth Circuit Court. Uh, bail jumping out of the Plymouth Circuit Court, same person. Uh, driving after revocation. Um, Oh, it's so sad. Criminal assault, criminal mischief, simple assault, uh, obstructing report uh, of, uh, of a crime, uh, reckless driving. Okay, that's, that's just a sample of, of what's going on uh, in, our, in, our, in our communities. Very, very sad. Um, the... Um, the, uh, the job, of the job of being a county commissioner is not that, is not that easy anymore. It's, it's a whole different world out there than when I was growing up at the uh, Unity 
uh, the Sullivan County home in Unity, New Hampshire, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and into the 80s. Whole different ball game. Um, I served with, as I said, two other county commissioners, Commissioner Wendy Piper. She is the chairperson of the Grafton County Board of Commissioners. She uh, is elected from the towns of Hanover, Lebanon, and Enfield. But uh, even though she's elected from those three towns, we all jointly serve all of Grafton County. Uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Marsha um, oh, McLeod, Marsha McLeod from up uh, the Littleton area, she serves the, the District 2 parts of Grafton County, which are the towns uh, along the Vermont uh, border along the Connecticut River, north of Hanover, so Orford, uh, North Haverhill, uh, and then up into Littleton and, and all those towns up there. That's District 2, Martha McLeod. And then I, I am the commissioner from District 3, and that is the, remaining of, the remainder of the towns here in Grafton County. And that includes uh, Plymouth, Bristol, Ashland, Rumney, Wentworth, Warren, up to Campton, Holderness, um, uh, Dorchester, and a lot of those little towns up there. So our job is to make sure that the nursing home is uh, following all of the federal and state rules and regulations. And the, the, that's a myriad of rules and regulations. And again, uh, our nursing home administrator, Craig Labor, and his staff, they do an outstanding job uh, to provide a safe, uh, a safe area for our residents in our nursing home uh, to live, visit with their family members, and uh, you know have a safe place to uh, you know spend the remainders of their lives. We do have some beds that are there for people who are getting um, physical therapy and are there temporarily after having an operation, so they don't have to stay at the hospital and they're not quite ready to go home, they need a, a safe place to uh, get ready to, to go home. We have beds for Medicaid patients, Medicare patients, private pay. We're also providing uh, beds for uh, people from the state of Vermont. State of Vermont, you know, is having some issues finding nursing uh, staff, so they're closing down some of their nursing homes. And those people that are leaving those nursing homes, uh, they're hoping that they can come over to Grafton County. The problem, though, is we have a 135-bed nursing home in Grafton County, but we can only fill 111 or so of those beds because we don't have enough nursing staff to meet the federal government rules and regulations for staffing. There is a ratio of nursing staff to residents, so we've got to make sure that we're not violating that because that could close us down. So Craig Labor and his staff does a fantastic job of making sure that everything is, is done right. You know, one of the things that's very unique to our Grafton County home is if, if you're on the right side of the nursing home, you look out your window and you can see the farm, you can see the cows and things, or some of the cows. Uh, and it, it's it, a lot of the people that are in our nursing home, are, you know, were raised on farms. And uh, they, they like being able to hear the cows mooing in the barn and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's going to be my report for now. Um, I do want to thank all the efforts uh, that uh, Commissioner Piper and Commissioner McLeod put in and the three of us trying to work together in trying to be good public servants, trying to save the taxpayers of Grafton County uh, their money on their taxes, to, but uh, that did not happen this time around, and I did not vote for the budget this time around because I still believe that there are things that are being uh, purchased under the budget that I feel do not need to be purchased so that we didn't have to uh, have an increase in your tax rate again uh, uh, this time around. Your taxes are high enough, and part of my job as a county commissioner is to work with our staff, with our department heads, with our elected officials to keep spending down. And by keeping spending down, there'll be less taxes. Okay, so I want to thank you for your time. If you have any questions, uh, I can be reached 
uh, at my uh, email, which is omer.ahern.jr at gmail.com. And I'm in Wentworth, New Hampshire. And if you go to the Grafton County website, you'll find my other contact information there. Thank you very much. I want to thank the folks here at uh, PBTV for giving me this opportunity to uh, talk with you folks. And again, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me, Grafton County Commissioner Omer C. Ahern, Jr. Thank you. God bless America. God bless the great state of New Hampshire. And let's hope that we can keep people safe. Thank you and goodbye.